Welcome to Cupid's Arrow. I'd like to find a man who enjoys adventure as much as I do. Yeah, I just want to find that lead singer who's going to strike some hard chords with me. I'm just a small town girl and I'm looking for my conservative knight in shining armor. And now, welcome the star of the show, Guy Montague! Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. What a great crowd. Okay, settle down. Well, if you've been looking for love in all the wrong places, you've come to the right place. Our television studios. Well, here we are in another episode of Cupid's Arrow, where we try to match guys and gals to find their perfect mate. And speaking of perfect, I'd like to introduce my co-host, the lovely and vivacious Shirley McPatton. Absolutely ravishing today. Oh, thank you. Absolutely fantastic. Well, we're starting the week with another show here on a Monday. How was your weekend? It was great, you know. I was really craving some toast and peanut butter, mm -hmm. a little banana chopped up with some yogurt on top. That mm. was my Sunday morning. <laughs> terrific, terrific. Well, I had a great weekend. I was the MC of the grand opening of the Tim Hortons up in Rochester, New York. Oh. It was terrific. Everyone asked me the same question. What is Shirley McPatton really like? And I give them the same answer. What you see is what you get. And How speaking kind of, of you. Yeah, and speaking <laughs> of getting stuff, why don't we see what our three contestants have? We have three lovely ladies looking to be struck by Cupid's arrow. First, contestant one is Molly Brannigan. By day, she's an animal trainer specializing in snakes. But in her free time, she loves bungee jumping, roller skating, and keeps a collection of pet rocks. Welcome, Molly. I'd like to find a man who enjoys adventure as much as I do. Our next contestant is Jane Powder, a classic neo-artisan who appreciates women who appreciate other women. She loves the books of Charlotte Bronte, rock music, and you can find her in her canoe in her backyard. Yeah, I just want to find that lead singer who's going to strike some hard chords with me. Pew! Finally, contestant number three is Jill Foster Hudgens. She works from home for a national, multi-level marketing company. Jill loves to sing pop in her shower, but will inevitably be famous as the next Mariah, Madonna, or Whitney. I'm just a small town girl, and I'm looking for my conservative knight in shining armor. Yeah, those are three swanky young ladies, I must say. And different. They all have a lot of individual qualities that That's make right. them special. I don't envy our bachelor with the choice he has to make. And uh, why don't we introduce him right now? <laughs> our first single tonight is Talbot Henry. He works at a call center for telecom. He collects model, model trains. He lives in the city and is hoping to meet the girl of his dreams. Welcome, Talbot. Hi, well, thanks, thanks, thanks. Talbot, thank you it's me. great to meet you. It's great to have you here. Say, you work at a uh, telecom call center. That sounds like you're right at the forefront of this I am, uh, new field. Cutting edge technology, I'm right there fighting the good fight. Yep. Yeah, that sounds Amazing. terrific. Bringing you people look, together. You look aggressively single. Well, I am. I, you know, I try to be single, but it, I've just reached that point in my life where it's like, no more. I need a gal pal by my side. Yeah, and... and uh, you, you collect model, model trains. I thought that was a, uh, a typo there. But, no, no, I collect models of the model trains. I live in a studio apartment, so I've just got nowhere to put them. So the model, model trains, they're a lot smaller. Oh. It's a niche collecto collectible, but, you know, we have a good time. Well, it sounds like you are a catch. I'll be right back, boys. I have to go blow my nose. Okay. Well, speaking of niches, maybe we'll find somebody that'll fit your niche. You can start asking them questions right now. Fantastic. Okay, my first question to contestant number one. What should a guy purchase to be more attractive? I would say a surfboard. I love to see guys that walk with the surfboard. Oh, that sounds very exciting. Nothing like an active guy, right? Yeah. Uh, contestant number two, same question. I'd have to go with a uh, wife beater. You're ripping and the sweat's just pouring down you. You can just see it, it's translucent enough. It's very sexy. Well, that sounds invigorating. I like to sweat, so yeah. I really, I can understand where she's coming from. That sounds like uh, a good one. Okay, that's number three, so, same question. I'd say 
that a guy who buys cowboy stuff is very sexy, you know, like horse and chaps. I love a guy in chaps. You be okay, eh? Well, I'm not really into cowboy stuff. My, my father was a cowboy and he ran out on me and my mother, so that's kind mm. of, leaves me a bit empty, that answer. I'm gonna go with contestant number two, the uh, sweat. I like to change my answer. Because we all sweat. Uh, yeah, that's right. so. Number three, you can't, you can't change your answer. You kinda just, it's first come, Don't first worry serve, about so it, so honey. Well, let's go on to our second question. Okay. Starting Cont with number two. Contestant number two. When do you feel most romantically inclined? Well, um, I mean, after a set, but uh, I would say after walking for a while at the zoo. Ooh. There's just something uh, romantic about animals. Well, I suppose it's those pheromones or something that get going, right? Yeah. That can always get you, get your engine revving. <laughs> I'm more of an animal planet man than the actual zoo. I don't like to be so close to wild beasts. Um, contestant number three, same, same question to you. Um, I think that I'm most romantically inclined after if my man uh, brings me my favorite Beanie Babies and we watch Knight Rider together and that really gets me in the mood. Sounds like a perfect evening to me. Yeah, don't hassle the half. I really understand. I get that <laughs> one. Yeah. Got that right. Get this number one. When I'm outdoors. <laughs> you mean in general? Yes, when I'm outdoors. So any times you're outdoors, you're romantically inclined? Uh, usually when I'm doing some sort of activity and it's hot outside. Okay. For some reason. So um, you're, you're seasonal? Absolutely. Okay, just check. I'm gonna go with contestant number three because I love Knight Rider and trains and cars are very similar, so, I mean, it's just a no-brainer for me. Um, contestant number three, final question goes to you. What's the first thing you look at? What's the first thing you think about when you look at yourself in the mirror in the morning? I think that I'm glad I'm a girl, and I thank my mother for her good genes um, she's, uh, she's actually much bigger than me, so I'm thankful to be smaller. Um, but yeah, just happy to be a girl. Wow, I'm just thinking about your mother. Uh, number one, the same question. I think to myself, how a pretty girl like me is still single. Seems a... A reasonable dubiosity? I mean, she said she was pretty, so it must be true. Yeah. Yeah. I would think so. And uh, number two, same question. You know, I keep hearing about these pretty girls, and um, I actually don't really like to think about gender in the morning. I like to just brush my teeth and, uh, and rock on. Wow. Hmm. Um, what do you think? Well, I think contestant number two sounds way too complicated for that one. So... I'm gonna go contestant number one. She said she was pretty, and who doesn't like a pretty girl? Okay, yeah. well, that's something. Well, Talbot, I don't envy you. You have a cornucopia of, a, of, a, of answers in which to make your choice from. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna give you Let 10 seconds this. to calm down yes. and come up with your conclusion. Okay, 10 seconds. Okay, um, what have you got? I'm gonna go out on a limb and I'm gonna go with contestant number one. I don't know why, but, but why not? Well, that is certainly terrific. Well, now that you've chosen the one that you are picking, why don't we find out who you're not picking? Okay. First up is a rock and roller. She's a drummer and she loves to sit in her canoe. Here's Jane Powder. Hey. Hey. Made a real mistake. Nice to meet you. 
which is nice. Contestant number three works from home at a multi-level marketing firm, loves to sing in the shower, and hopes to be a one-name diva one day. This is Jill Foster Hudgens. Hi, hi Jill. She's a petite little thing, isn't she? Yes. Quite, quite the package. <laughs> well, let's now find out what you did pick. And here she is. She's an animal trainer that specializes in snakes. Her hobbies are bungee jumping and roller skating, and she keeps a collection of pet rocks. Say hello to Molly Brannigan. Hey! Yeah. Say, Shirley, why don't you tell us where our lovely couple is gonna go on their date? And you're both off to Chatham. We're sending you on a fantastic holiday weekend in the port town of Chatham. You'll soak up the sun and fun at the Sheridan Hotel with beautiful harborside views. You can take a plunge in the indoor pool and then it's off in your hired car to historic Nantucket. Upon your return, you'll dine at famous Sullivan's Restaurant. It's a terrific holiday on the Cape, care of Sheridan Hotel and Avos Rental Car. Wow, that sounds like an absolutely wow, terrific, terrific day. Wow. Now, if you have picked your perfect match. Let's see what your prize is going to be if you agree with the Qtron 5000. If the Qtron 5000 picks you both, you'll win a year membership at Joe's Gym. Joe's is a world-class exercise facility with locations all over the country. Get fit for your holiday weekend at Joe's Gym, a friendly way to break the sweat. Good luck. Shirley, why don't you tell us if they're a match? Not a match. Oh, phew. well, that's a surprise. You're not a match. But you two have got a great weekend coming up, and I think you're going to have a great, great time. And I we'll think look, so too. We look forward to seeing how that all works out. Be sure and come back for more of Cupid's Out. Cupid's Out. It's time for Arrow Strive. Did the Qtron 5000 pick a perfect match? This first-time couple dined, danced, and explored the great outdoors. They took on some of the local sites, too. This evening sponsored by Marakeet Hotel and Resort in Cylinder, Michigan. Marakeet, it's out of this world. Well, welcome back. Shirley, I have to tell you, I've really been looking forward to this one. Uh, we're bringing back a returning couple that we send off on a wonderful dream date, but they had the lowest compatibility score in the whole history on Cupid's Arrow and the Qtron 5000 of .00001 of a percent. I remember it like it was yesterday. My jaw literally hit the floor. Well, we'd like to bring them back, and here they are, Brett Stone Street and Rachel. Thank you. Uh, we, what I'd like to comment on that point zero 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 one mm -hmm. percentage. Mm -hmm. That means we still had a chance. <gasps> so you're telling me there's a chance. She How is the smartest. Inspirational. That is something. Well, I'd like to get down to a few things. I mean, what was your first impression of each other? As, as, as? Oh, Tell well, them. well, like. Well, my first impression was, uh, you know, this is a lot of women, mm. and uh, I like yeah, a, yeah. I like a lot of women. You wanted to learn how to handle this much woman. I don't, I didn't think I could do it, honestly, guy. <laughs> you like to die trying, right, man? Right. You're bad. You're naughty. <laughs> oh my! Oh my goodness! Now I have to ask, Thank moving you. forward, what was the highlight of your trip? Ooh. Ooh, tell them, Brett. Tell there him. were so many highlights. Uh, geez. You know, the food. Breakfast was delicious. Have you ever, there's this thing they have, they're called pancakes, and they have little chocolate chips in them. Wow. Uh, I've, had a, I've had a pancake before, right? And I've mm -hmm. had chocolate chip cookies. Yeah, me too. But I'm, chocolate put pancakes? Them, put them together? It was delicious. It Unbelievable. Was the best. Tell them. Wow, it was okay. the best. 
That's something new on the whole culinary uh, scale there, I guess. Yeah. That's that, that was, that was a, a high point for, for, and, for and, me. And this one, she got a little chocolate right on her nose. <laughs> and you got chocolate right here on your I nose. I do, and you touched it. And I touched it, it like this. And taste I said, it. Well, I He's bad. You Don't you feel like tell a third You're, wheel right now? I do. I'll You're tell you, bad. I certainly do. But, you know, you were getting along so well. I'm just curious, were there any kind of pet peeves that popped up between the two of you? Ooh, Ooh. tell him. Me? Yeah, I just can't even think of one, but let's tell see. him. Yeah? It's just maybe too much woman. Damn. You'd like to, you wish you knew. He wishes he knew. <laughs> Tell him, you wish you knew. Oh, she's so I true. wish. <laughs> it's stupid. So, I think the more important question is what does the future look like? Oh, well, I hope there's a future. I don't know that I believe you, what you just said. Too much woman? I meant it as a compliment. You did? Yeah. Oh, well, I take that one back. Oh, you. I, that was, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, you tell him, tell him I do things it, and it, I don't know. It hurt really good. <laughs> wow, well, I'm I, speechless. Uh, all I got to say is, I think we better bring in somebody to check the wiring on that Qtron 5000 because... We you had a chance. That's right. We you had him. Tell him. Really. We had him. That's right. Well, we're going to bring in the Maytag repairman for that one, I think. Exactly. <laughs> I don't think Toast is the leading technology in finding love anymore. You got that right. Well, thank you two so much for coming back, and we wish you two the best, the best for your future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's just delightful. Welcome to Cupid's Arrow. We have three handsome gents looking to be struck by Cupid's arrow. Our first contestant is Jesse. He is an auto mechanic from Brighton and is a passionate Taekwondo enthusiast. He loves to travel and aspires to visit the Orient and walk the Grey Wall of China. I like my women like I like my cars. Fast with a lot under the hood, if you know what I mean. Our next contestant is Michael Stenz. He's a high school guidance counselor that enjoys seeing his students achieve their goals. In his spare time, he collects porcelain owls and is an avid racquetball player. Hi, I'm Michael Stenz, and I'd like to find a nice girl to take to the park on Sunday afternoons. Finally, contestant number three is Colin Smith. He's the junior manager of a national bank but wants to be on TV one day. He takes acting classes in his spare time, and his favorite thing to do is watch TV. I'm looking for a girl that will uh, share the remote with me. And now, Guy Montague! Wow, those are three great guys. And let's see the gal we have to match up with them. These guys are in luck because we have a beautiful single lady. She's Kim Campbell. Kim was a professional cheerleader and has worked at several gentlemen's clubs. She says she's sick of tough football players. In her spare time, she volunteers at the local animal hospital. Welcome, Kim. <laughs> well, Kim, you are absolutely delightful. Oh my god. So you were a cheerleader. That must have been exciting work. I was, I was, and that's why I'm still fit. You know what I mean? So you're looking for a change in your life. You're tired of the whole tough guy thing, huh? Yeah. I'm, I'm sick of these football players. They, mm -hmm. they take me out. They're sweet to me, but I need someone sensitive. You know, he can have some money, but just somebody with some feelings. Well, Sounds like you might be the guy for her guy. <laughs> well. well, I think I got three guys that might give me an argument on that one. So why don't we give them a chance? <laughs> let's see. And let's get those questions going for our three lucky guys. All right. If you could be anywhere right now, where would it be and why? That's for number one. Uh, hi, Kim. Uh, you sound like a real swell lady. Um, <laughs> Me, I've always wanted to go to the Orient, uh, especially the Great Wall of China. It's, it's my dream to walk the Great Wall of China and to spit off the edge of it. So that's where I'd be, Asia. Yeehaw! Yeah. Well, that's, that's great. Expectorate off the Great Wall of China. That's terrific. <laughs> Same question for number two. If you could be anywhere right now, where would it be and why? I would have to go with uh, Disney World. It's the happiest place on Earth. That's a great place to go. Who wouldn't want to go there? And number three, the same question. If you could be anywhere right now, where would it be and why? Well, uh, gosh, Kim, uh, I'd probably be at your, with you at your parents' house watching TV while they're upstairs. Oh, that reminds me of being in high school. 
That sure sounds homey. Well, what do you think? Who gave the best answer of those three, that question there? Well, I mean, I do love to travel. In fact, I've been to Dallas, Houston, you name it, in mm -hmm. Texas. But um, I'm going to have to go with number three. Number three. I like the idea of, of a family man. That's terrific. I like that. Real down home. Well, let's get your second question going, starting with number two. All right. If you were going to brag about something, what would it be? I'll, I'll brag about the fact that I'm very clean and organized, and I smell really good. I use nice cologne, musk. Yeah, I'm a clean, clean man. Well, that's good. That sounds and smells nice to me. <laughs> Cleanliness is next to godliness, I always say. <laughs> yeah. Well, number, uh, number three, same question. If you were going to brag about something, what would it be and why? Well, uh, Kim, I'm a, I'm, a little, uh, I'm a little embarrassed to say this, but at work, I work at the bank, and, uh, well, they call me the, the coin counter. I can basically, I can look at a pile of coins and tell you exactly how much money is there. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's something. That's, I do that's, like a man that knows how to count. A <laughs> <laughs> little variation on the bean counter. I kind of like that. Number one, same for you. If you were going to brag about something, what would it be? Um, no, that's easy. I think probably my extensive martial arts training. I, I've been studying Taekwondo for like the last year. Um, and so, you know, I can defend myself and defend my lady if it ever arises. You know, mm. and It's important for a man to defend what's his. Well, which one of those three answers grabbed your attention? Well, um, that possessiveness is a little alarming, uh, mm -hmm. contestant number one. Mm -hmm. But I do have to say that somebody like myself, who is physically fit and values physical fitness, I would have to go with the person involved in martial arts. Oh, that was number one. How about that? Well. Yes, it was. A little counterintuitive, <laughs> as they say. I know. Okay. I like to keep them guessing. Well, let's go with your third question, and we'll start with number three on that. What can a girl show you that will bring a tear to your eye? Ooh. Well, hmm. What can a girl show me to bring a tear to my eye? Well, I guess, um, I mean, I'm almost crying now because you're talking to me. <laughs> but, oh, but my God. Maybe if you took the remote control and just said, I'm going to watch whatever I darn well want to watch, I'd, I'd like that. <laughs> Well, passive aggressive there, kind of like that. <laughs> no reaction to that. That just no. I mean, I love TV, and I I was on TV, and I'm That's on right. TV now. That's so. right. It's terrific. So let's watch some TV. Okay. Well, let's go to that same question with number one. What can a girl show you that will bring a tear to your eye? Um, I'm not sure if I'm taking this too literally, but onions, onions make me cry every time. Hmm. So hmm. keep them away. Yeah. That, that is literal. Yeah, that's, that's a little too literal for me. I like somebody with feelings. Well, let's have that same question now again for number two. What can a girl show you that will bring a tear to your eye? If a girl showed me that she loved my mom as much as I love her, it would definitely bring a tear to my eye. Oh, my God. <laughs> You know, that's rather touching and upsetting at the same time. Oh, that almost brings a tear to my eye. Well, well, what do you think? Out of those three questions, which one is your favorite? I gotta go with number two. Number two, well, that's terrific. Gotta well, go with somebody who loves their mom. Yep. Well, Kim, I have to tell you, once again, I don't envy you this decision. It's a veritable rainbow that you have to pick uh, from yes. for making your decision. But we're gonna give you 10 seconds, and let's see you make up your mind. All right. I want to spend the rest of my life with. <laughs> or in the least, I guess, uh, go get a steak with. All right, time's up. Well, what's your decision? I'm going to have to go with contestant number three. Number three! Well, that is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> wow, that is one lucky guy, let me tell you. But. Since number three won, let's see who didn't win first, the guys that you didn't pick. Okay, contestant number one is an auto mechanic and a Taekwondo enthusiast, and he wants to spit off the Great Wall of China. Meet Jesse. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> excuse you. 
Thanks, Love Jesse. Martial arts. Okay, contestant number two, who he also didn't pick, is a high school guidance counselor who enjoys helping his students achieve their goals. He's an avid racquetball player, and he collects porcelain owls. Meet Michael Stenz. Oh, hi. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. You. Oh, so sweet about your mama. Better luck next time, Mike. Thanks. Okay, this is the big one. Take a deep breath. You ready? Yes. He's a junior bank manager who wants to be on TV one day. Mission accomplished. He takes acting classes. Oh. And he likes to spend all day watching TV. Meet <laughs> Colin Smith. <laughs> oh, this is a, oh, this is terrific. Oh my God, he's crying right now. He's crying right now. This is great. Well, let's find out where you two are going on your dream date. A fantastic trip awaits you, Kim and Colin. You're both off to Sanibel Island. We're sending you on a fantastic holiday weekend to the Moven Pick Beach Resort on Sanibel Island. You'll soak up the sun and play on the beach. There's lots of island activities from water skiing to sailing. You'll enjoy an exotic fresh island seafood dinner and succulent barbecue. Surrounded by beach and palms, your accommodations offer every modern convenience. This weekend resort getaway is compliments of Movenpick Resort and Cupid's Arrow. Wow, that sounds absolutely fantastic. You two are going to have the time of your lives. <laughs> and now, if you two are a match with the Qtron 5000, Let's see what your prize is going to be. If the Qtron 5000 picks you both, you'll each win a handheld voice recorder, the latest in micro cassette technology from Dynamix. Small and lightweight, these recorders can travel anywhere. Record crystal clear, stereophonic sound from your next class session or board meeting. Dynamix, clear sound in your pocket. Good luck. Oh my. The latest in miniaturization and technology. Oh Amazing. <laughs> Let's see what the Qtron 5000 has to say. It's a match! Wow. We did it! Go team! Go team! Go team! Cupid's arrow really hit a bullseye here tonight. <laughs> so, thanks so much for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Don't forget That's to watch right. Cupid's Arrow every night. Thanks for watching.